Now we're gonna take a look at what if things are dirty. So I'm gonna go back to master here. And as you can see in this commit history, there were seven commits. And then somehow, uh, this was actually a feature from a different branch that got brought in, but under um, Bytecook's commits rather than the original author's commits. So just something kind of funky went here. And then we see all of the commits that have already been committed are actually being committed again. So this isn't this isn't uh, the result of a of a rebase. This is the result of somehow the same seven commits that were there before, plus some extra ones, plus a merge from master, were all brought ag in again a second time. So this is this is just kind of messed up. This is not going to be clean. I'll show you. It's not going to be clean. I'll show you very very simple how to fix it. Okay. So I'm in master, which is representative of Byte Cook's latest commit there, and I am going to do a checkout, and I'm going to call this one Simlink Merged, and I'm going to do my squash. So let me just do git rebase-i head, and I'm going to do tilde 20 because there's like 19 commits here. Okay, so what do we see? Down at the bottom are Byte Cook's most recent, and then it looks like right about here, let's see, is there anything before that? I don't think there's anything before that. So right about here is where it starts. So we'll pick that and then all of these will squash. So this is the same process as before. All right, I'm gonna save and edit. So everything should get squashed except for this. Okay, but here's a problem. If I'm squashing my own commits and there's a conflict, a merge conflict, that means I'm probably gonna have a bad day. Um, it's probably not worth it to go through this because there's probably something fundamentally wrong, like in this case, like I just showed. It's just commits are being confused because they're playing out on top of each other when they're, the, they're really the same thing. So we're gonna get weird merge conflicts that aren't worth solving because they're just like junk conflicts that came from a mistaken merge or rebase or operation or whatever. So I'm gonna do git log and I'm gonna, uh, actually, sorry, let me go back. I'm gonna do a git rebase dash dash abort because I don't even wanna attempt this rebase really. Check status, okay, I'm clean. I'm gonna do a git log and I'm gonna go down to just the commit just before the first change made by Bytecook here. And I've got that copied. So I'm gonna do git reset and give it that commit. Now we can see only three files were actually changed in all of that. And if we do a git diff, there's not that much that's different. Um, you know, it's, it's just a few lines changed here, so we shouldn't be having uh, heavy merge conflicts, right? This, this doesn't look complex. So it's gonna be simpler just to do this reset than it would be to go through um, the conflict resolution process. So what I'm gonna do, let me bring these up again. I'm gonna do a git stash, and it's gonna take all three of those away. And then I'm gonna do a git pull rebase from the origins master. Okay, that came in very cleanly, no problem. So now I'm gonna do a git stash pop. All right, and then let's take a look at the status. And now we're back down to just one conflict, or one conflict file, rather. And if I look in this conflict file, and I look for my arrows, it's the same thing that we saw in the other branch. This is simple, this is easy to fix. You know, this isn't even really a conflict, it's just, it didn't, it didn't know what order to add two things that both got added in. All right, that's it, that's all it was. So now, I've effectively gotten rid of all the commit history, but it's okay, because I'm just gonna write another commit, add evil symlink check. And now I look at my log, there it is. So I've effectively, oh whoops, there was one more there, let me rebase that. Get, get, whoops, get, rebase, um, dash I, let's just do like the last five here. I'm gonna squash this one. 
into the previous one. And then when it asks me, I'm going to get rid of all the extra commit messages. I'm just going to say add evil symlink check. There we go. Okay, so now when I get look at git log, it's all down to just one commit. And then the same thing as before, I can do a git push force origin symlink merged. And that would give me the opportunity to create a pull request or update the existing pull request if I have it so that it's rebased and squashed. And this is simpler than going through things that are just jumbled out of order. Okay. So that's how you do a clean git rebase, you know, and I, and I recommend starting with the squash because it just makes it simpler. You have fewer, if there are conflicts with the rebase itself, you have fewer things that you're going to have to go through. Um, we looked at reset, which, you know, rebase is just kind of an automated way to do a reset and then a commit and a reset and a commit and a reset and a commit kind of thing. So rebase is just kind of like an underlying tool. And we talked about branch names because those are good. Yeah. I, so I think that's, that's everything that you need to know for the basic case about a git rebase. And, and, uh, you know, big key is if things are dirty and you can't figure out what to do, I would say just go back to where your commits were, do a reset, go with, do a stash, do the rebase from master and then pop your stash and then work through just the conflicts that are there because that'll probably be the simplest thing. So I hope that that is helpful for you in uh, working with other people at your job and working in open source projects. If it is, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe if you'd like more like this. And I am working on a software engineering video course. If you'd like to know more about that, you can click the link in the description. It's called Beyond Code Bootcamp, and I will be happy to see you there. Adios.